Our dyno appointment for the MR2 is scheduled for the beginning of next week, so we only have a couple days to get this thing ready for the dyno. And right now, why it's working on some wiring, yep. getting that knocked out. It's the Make plug for the uh, super fancy electronic wastegate. Yeah, we're doing it very legit. All yep. Deutsch connectors, nice and clean. Yep, super fancy stuff. So he's getting that stuff knocked out right now. We're just getting all the little things buttoned up, like the uh, radiator fan, the intercooler pump and all that stuff. While he has been working on that, I have been pulling the windows out of the factory doors. So this is actually the passenger side door. I still need to get the glass out of this one. And we got the glass pulled out of the driver's side door because we did order some Lexan windows for the MR2, but it might be a little bit until those come in. And we're trying to have this thing as ready as possible before it goes on to the dyno. And if you look at this, we actually, made this fit really, really good and it looks awesome. So this is the factory glass. You know, it's gonna be a little heavier than the Lexan one would be, but we, uh, we found a little hack that works freaking awesome. You can see we have no brackets holding it in place. There's no window regulator in there. The window doesn't go up and down. It is solid and it closes and it seals really nice, just like factory. What we found out is that if you look at this little white plastic deal right there, that's actually a stop that is bolted to the window and there's a bracket underneath it right now that's actually holding the window up and that's why the window is not falling down right now. From factory, that bracket actually is supposed to be on top of that and it keeps the window from rolling too far up. But since it's slotted right here and you can adjust it, we found we can flip that bracket upside down and it's like a little holder you kind of see the metal right there and it's literally holding our window up in place on the back there and then there's another one right there on the front and that one's made out of metal and you can see it's kind of jammed in there and it's just holding right up on that stop and then there's another little factory plastic stop right under this guy right here that you can't see but um, that doesn't allow the window to come up either so we kind of wedged it into place with those guys and it works perfect so it shuts good. And then this is where the mirror obviously used to go. We took the mirror off, but we kept this piece right here so the window can still follow this track. And then there's also the track that goes into the door itself. And we're thinking we could just make a nice little plate to cover that guy up because it does have these three holes right here and that's how the mirror bolted on. So we could just cover that guy up and make it look nice and clean and done. But yeah, we got windows ready to go and we got them figured out because that was an issue we were thinking we were gonna run into is not having windows and if for some reason this thing was ready to go to the track soon after the dyno, that was gonna hold us back because we need windows on the car. They require that at the track to have the cabin kind of sealed up, but we uh, found a way around it. So that worked awesome. And right now I'm getting ready to pull the passenger one apart, get this glass out and do the same to the other door. Ready to take this thing for a rip? Yes, came to Honda garage to see what's going on here. And you guys are working on a Toyota. Kind of threw me off a little bit, but. Yeah, Cooper swung by and gonna give him a quick rip in the NSX here. Yeah, what you think? I love this car. I've always been an NSX fan. They're just, I don't know, there's something different about them. The way that they built them compared to every other supercar of that time, there's just something that hits so different about an NSX. Yeah, they do hit different. I can like angle my legs yeah, I mean, as a wing. You know? Are you coming too? need an air brake, I'll just go like straight up. We can probably fit you in the trunk. We'll get some extra traction for the road. Come, Come on, on, we can squeeze in. Yeah, I don't think she's got much of a trunk, buddy. <laughs> See, that's why we got the minivan for yeah, when we gotta so take the family. Got six family well, that cruiser. Thing go 150, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm out on that. Uh, yeah, probably. You've never even rode in the Rattacy yet. I, I feel like I did when You're just was... saying that because you're scared no, of it. No, no, no. I think when we first did the um the half mile event years ago, I think I rode in it. When we but were you haven't little... but you haven't rode in it since no. it's been revamped was, in all wheel drive. I mean that was what, three, four years ago, probably five years yeah, ago. Yeah, that's when it was a lot slower. <laughs> That was when it was an H series. That's what I thought. Yeah. So completely different car, pretty much. Just the only thing the same was it was also a minivan. Yeah, that's the only thing that stayed <laughs> the, the <driver>. same. <laughs> hey, it has a roll cage now. You'll be safe. Yeah, I'm. I feel confident. We'll we'll discuss that one after after <laughs> this one. <laughs>
UK, which I know yeah, it's especially been on the track where it could hook all that. Yeah, but even like on the streets of Texas, like TX2K nights, some 1320 video stuff. guys got our window out of the door and real quick I just wanted to show you guys for all my MR2 people thought this was a pretty cool hack because I think you can do this with the stock doors too so even though I just explained it you're gonna you're gonna watch it again so these are the uh, stops right there and then there's the one on the front this is the little guy that bolts to the door and when the window rolls up it catches on that keeps it from stopping also these hit on little brackets too that keep it from rolling all the way up but this guy Goes like that, bolts to the door, right? Look where that bolt hole is. If you just do one of these, a little whoop, 180 it, the bolt hole's still basically in the same spot. It is a slotted uh, deal on the door. So you just uh, put the window in there and then kind of shimmy this in there underneath, bolt that guy up, and then the window is held up and it's locked there. And then these other stops keep it from, you know, just coming out of the door. So I thought that was really cool and it made our life much easier. So like I said, these are a little heavier than the Lexan ones will be, but they will get us by because we need some windows on the car, better aerodynamics, better speedy boy. And uh, yeah, gonna go ahead and put this into the door here. And we do have to drill holes in our carbon fiber door and it is a little intimidating since this thing is really nice and I don't really like just punching holes in the door, but you gotta do what you gotta do. We have these brackets that need to be installed to hold our window up. And then here's that little triangle deal that the mirror bolted onto. So we do have to drill a couple holes, but luckily they are all marked out exactly where they need to be on the door here. There's all these little kind of indents where the holes need to be. This door is freaking awesome. Whoever makes these carbon fiber doors did a really good job because it is 100% kind of plug and play with the factory stuff. You could put the speakers in, everything, window regulators, you could still have the windows working and uh, it's all laid out and everything has been fitting up super easy and precise. So. I really am happy with these carbon doors. So we got some holes to drill and a window to install. And just like that, our window is on the car and that lines up pretty good. If you saw me shut it there, it did shift forward a little bit and that is because I don't have the forward stop on it. So it is a little loose until I get that guy on there. The back one, you don't have to do this too, but on that forward stop when you flip it, you do actually have to grind off this little tab right there. That guy, just grind that flush and then it can go on upside down and I'm doing that right now. Once I do that, the front of it will be supported and it will be all done and ready to go. And now we are done and I am saying this again because I wanted to correct myself. The back one is the only one that needs flipped upside down. The front one you actually leave right side up. When you grind that tab off, it lets you drop it down a little bit and if you look in there, the stop that is bolted to the window, that outer metal piece is now actually sitting on top of the stop in there. 
So I just wanted to clear that up in case any MR2 guys are going to do that in the future. I feel like I might be one of the first to find out about this, maybe, maybe not, but if you want to gut your doors and have a way to keep the window up without making a bracket, this is freaking super easy and simple. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, clear that up. So now when we shut the door, shuts real nice. Check that out. Looks freaking awesome. Then once again, our triangle from where the mirror used to go right there. Like I said, I would love to make some awesome like delete plates. Maybe make some that say like boosted boys on them and they can bolt on in that spot. And yeah, we are all good to go. Both uh, glass windows are in. And even though we did add some weight back into each door, it was only about probably 10 pounds a door with the added material. So considering we saved over a hundred pounds uh, by switching to the carbon doors in the first place, we're only adding about 20 pounds back total, which uh, overall we're still saving so much freaking weight. So yeah, that came out awesome. One less thing done. And uh, she is getting very, very close. We were actually gonna try to cut out our own temporary windows from clear plastic from Home Depot. And I'm really glad we didn't because this would have been a very pathetic attempt at making some windows. But I got this piece right here. You can see where I tried to trace out the window on it. This was actually a clear protective shield, you know, to like put in between a register so there's no face-to-face -face contact and you might get sneezed on or something, oh no. But anyways, glad we did not go that route because that probably would have came out janky. Got the good ones in there, got the stock ones looking awesome. And then while I was at Home Depot, I also picked up this uh, sheet metal. This came in a big roll. And I got this piece cut out right here to uh, get ready to put that in front of this hole on the front bumper like so. Because we need to seal up this hole right here. It's not a crucial thing, but we don't have a radiator up here anymore, so we don't need air going inside of there causing unnecessary turbulence and stuff. So we're just gonna seal that off. And then I thought it'd be cool to maybe like sticker bomb this once it's on there. But uh, yeah, that is uh, another thing we need to get done. We ready to try the gate? Yeah, we can give it a shot. Freaking. Give her a test click. Give her a little click click. Ooh. Oh, hey. I heard it. I heard it move. Do it again. Oh. Dude. She is actuating. That thing's quick. Hold on, let me get my phone. Let me look at it. So we actually pulled the dump tube off. Just so we could take a look at this once we get the wastegate up and going. And she is, oh, I don't even think I need a light. You can see it in there. Go for it. Oh, it is moving. It's opening and closing. Our electric gate is operating. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. What do you say? Is that all the way down? It doesn't look like it goes. It goes completely shut or what? I mean, it definitely opens, but it doesn't look like it's moving a whole bunch. Yeah, that's just all they need to move though. I don't know. Have to talk to the guys at fuel. Thing. Yeah, make sure we uh, yeah. have it working right. But I mean, it's it's working. I mean, it's wired in. It is a little weird. I don't, there might be something I have to configure a little different because it won't show me the percentage on here that it's open. But it is showing that it's going from 0.5 all the way to 4.5 volts. So I'm assuming that is its full range. Okay. But it just won't, it's not telling me the percentage. And then it also says it's really hot. It says it's at 302 degrees, so I'm sure it just needs a little bit of scaling and Got set it. up in here. Yeah, set her up properly, yeah. but she's working. I, I adjusted nothing. All I did was wire in the inputs for it, and so there could be something I'm missing. Could have broke it by now. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's sick. Have to get a hold of Anders and yep. get that kind of dialed in. Yeah, the electric wastegate is definitely uh, new to us, so we're going to get all that figured out, but we do have it operating and working. And we got all the EGT stuff over here working yep. as well. Our modules powered up. All of the probes are reading temperature in each of the cylinders. I was gonna say, you can see those right here. So if we go to this, go to the CAN network and go to our EGT thing here, we can see that all of the EGTs are the same. And I did verify them. I did heat one of the runners up with a blowtorch and the, the individuals do move, but the manifold just sits right at the same temp, so. They're all working good. Freaking everything's about wired up. Got the fan water pump done. I can hit those two. Yeah, that's the beauty of the fuel tech. You can just hit test on the computer and literally turn everything on through the yeah. laptop. So we can go like this. Hit the, the fan. fan Got the fan. And that's set to come on automatically so we don't have to worry about turning it on. Same with the water pump. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that, but the water pump's going on down there. Yeah. And then just got a couple of little things left to wire in, like the laser height sensor, and then it's done. I think we should show them that real quick too. Ended off with uh, some cool technologies. Cool techs. 
Yeah, I'm down. That thing's sick. We actually just got the laser height sensor in. We'll go grab that real quick. All right, guys, this is our new laser height sensor for the MR2 to help combat our wheelies. And uh, we're about going to wrap up this video, but we're going to power this up real quick and show you guys the uh, fanciness of this banner laser height sensor here. It's just power ground and then signal out to the computer. And when you power this guy up, we're just going to use the jump box real quick, but it just uses regular 12 volt. Oh, hold on. Let me not shine the laser at my face. <laughs> Boom. When it powers on, look at that. Pretty sure this is in millimeters right here. And it shows in real time how far we are from the ground. Look at that. Look at the number go up. And it Hold goes on. all the way. Moving. Focused now. on there? Yeah, now we're focused. See that? Look, in real time, it goes as close as an inch to the ground before it runs out of range. You can see the light on the front turn off. And its range is from one inch to 20 inches. And right now, I believe that number is reading in millimeters. And it is in real time. Look how fast that reacts. And then we can go all the way up. I can't autofocus that fast, homie. No. So we have our new fancy laser height sensor. You can see the dot, it's projecting on the ground right there. And yeah, that will tie into the computer and we'll have real time, very accurate laser height. So that is freaking sick. So we still gotta get that guy wired in and uh, keep going from there. But yeah, the other sensor we had was just not nearly as uh, nice quality as the one we got here. And this one is just direct plug and play, like super simple. We don't have to spend all day configuring it and figuring stuff out. This sensor is actually already programmed to work for a fuel tech. It had to, the guy had to do some setup stuff and everything, but they're just plug and play. So this is the way to go. And that is our new uh, wheelie control right there. All right, give me my sensor back. Let me go put that thing in. <laughs> yes, sir. That's the last sensor we need installed. And then we'll show the wheel speeds another day. We did get the wheel speed sensors in as well, but yeah, no big deal on those. Just a little quick. sensor that goes behind the studs to read wheel speed. We had to pull the tires off, get those knocked out and mounted, but those are in and then just getting them all configured and everything talking to the computer right now is all we need and it's all ready to go. Yes, so, sir. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up. We got we had a lot of random stuff going on in this video. We have just been going hard on the MR2 trying to get it ready for uh, next week. So it's right there and we'll see you guys in the next one. I think the next video will probably just be us probably heading to the dyno and uh, starting to get it all figured out because it's downhill from here. It's pretty much together. So yep. that's that. Cool. See you guys later. Bye. <laughs>